Hello, whittlers and carvers, and thank you once again for joining me here at The Joy of Carving. It's a slightly longer video today because we're going to be covering quite a lot. So grab yourself a coffee or a cup of tea and let's begin The Joy of Carving. I've taken the blanks for these scoops from a slice of birch wood. If you've purchased the kit from my website, then the blanks will already be cut out for you. If you're cutting out blanks from a slice of natural wood like I have here from a larger log, then you need to allow some time for that wood to acclimatize to the temperature of your home. This is to allow cracks and splits in the wood to naturally appear and you'll know where to avoid when you're marking out your blanks. And we're beginning here just by marking out the circle where the bowl of our scoop is going to be. So there's two tools that we're going to be using today. The first is this mummification looking tool called a crook knife. And this is purposely made to carve out scoops and bowls. Now there are various different methods and techniques for using this knife. Have a look around on YouTube and a look around online and find the best method that works for you. I'm going to show you how I do it today, but you might not be comfortable with the way that I do it because I do the cuts towards myself. I just feel like this is a much stronger grip. Now it is a slightly awkward grip with using the crook knife. So what I like to do is get to a comfortable position and I actually hold it into myself a little bit and I just gently scoop towards myself. Now the key here is that I'm not pulling. This again, like our standard whittling, is all about the wrist motion. So I'm not pulling or dragging the knife in any way that's gonna to come towards me. But I just find that this is the most comfortable position for me. A lot of people who whittle or carve uh, prefer a cut away from themselves. But to me, I've gotten so used to using Japanese tools, which always work on the pulling motion, that this is just what's most comfortable for me. But you need to get into a position that you find comfortable. I thought I'd take you back to school a little bit with this whiteboard. But I just thought it'd be easier to draw you a diagram just to explain a little bit more about the direction that we're carving with this scoop. So if you imagine that this circle is the bowl of our scoop and this is the direction of the wood grain flowing horizontally. Normally with whittling and with carving we always carve in the direction of the wood grain so that the wood doesn't fracture and splinter. However I found when I'm carving bowls and scoops, the easiest way to carve them is to actually carve in a circular motion like this and carve towards the center of the bowl or the scoop. And I just find that this is a much more effective way of carving. Now, the only issue with this is, yes, we're going with the grain when we carve, but we're also going across the grain as well. Now, this isn't a problem, but depending on which type of wood that you're carving, you may see little tears instead of a smooth carve. This isn't a problem, so what we're going to do is we're going to just continue carving in this circular way. Uh, we're going to get the desired depth of the bowl. And then when we're finished, we're just going to lightly carve with the flow of the grain again in order to smooth out those areas. Just a quick note as well, at the early stages of your carving, when the scoop is much more flat, there isn't much of a bowl shape carved into there. It's going to be very easy for that knife to slip away from you like that. So we're not using a lot of force here. The trick really is to just keep doing tiny, tiny bits. Make sure that you're confident with your knife, that you're gripping it firmly and you were resisting the urge to just want to pull. You really don't want to pull because you're just going to slip and catch the knife on yourself. So just tiny, tiny increments. Keep working your way into the center and you'll start to get a little bit of a bump in the center like I am there. When that happens, just bring the knife further into the center and just start carving that. It should be a smooth action so you'll feel a little bit of resistance when you're going across the grain. You'll feel a little bit of resistance 
when you're going against it a little bit there. But overall, it should just be small increments. Resist the urge to try and take off a lot of wood at once. This is really a patient process. Another little piece of advice that I have for you is if you cut yourself doing this, or if you cut yourself whittling or carving or any kind of woodworking, don't let it put you off the experience. I don't know how well you can see my hands, but I have numerous little cuts on my hands from various different wood carvings and woodworkings. This one isn't from woodworking, by the way. That was when I chopped my finger off when I was little. That was pretty grisly, but there are other sort of numerous cuts across my hand that I've done over the years from woodworking. And it teaches us a valuable lesson. Every single one of those cuts was from something that could have been avoided. So I've either been carving with an instrument that was too blunt and I've been applying too much force, or I've been carving at an angle that I knew was dangerous and I knew would cause an injury, but I carried on anyway. So it's really a case of just not letting it put you off. It happens to the best of us. You will inevitably at some point cut yourself, but don't let it put you off the experience because woodworking and wood carving is such a beautiful experience. It would be a shame if you stopped doing it just because you cut yourself. So don't let it put you off. It happens to the best of us, really. You will find, as you're carving this as well, that it gets easier the more of a dip that you've carved. So when you initially start and you have that flat surface, the knife naturally wants to slip against that flat surface. As you've carved the dip, it wants to grip the wood and carve it instead of sort of slipping out of your hands. So now that we have these bowls carved out, the scoops, we're going to get some sandpaper and just sand these down until they're nice and smooth. There's the bowls of our scoops, nice and smooth. And I would say that it's really worth spending the extra time to just sand the bowls of those scoops down as well. And now we're just going to continue carving by marking the area that we want to shape out for the underside of the bowl as well. We're carving away from ourselves here, but as we carve that dip deeper, we're going to be carving uphill again. So it's going to create this feathering on the wood, but don't worry about this because we are going to correct it in a bit, but just try and stop before you go upwards for that carving. So you can see there the feathering that I'm getting, but we will correct it. So I have reversed the direction that I'm carving here, just so that I'm continuing to carve down that hill. One of the things that some spoon carvers do, some woodworkers do, is, of course, what I've done here is I've cut this out on the bandsaw because it's the initial shape that we need and that will save a long time of whittling. But a lot of spoon carvers who are trying to mass produce these will do the whole lot on the bandsaw. So they would have cut all of this shape out on the bandsaw and then all you're then doing is whittling the rough shape. That's fine if you're trying to mass produce these if you're trying to make 10 or so you know there's presents for people but i find that whittling is a real patient process it's a meditative experience and it sort of takes some of the fun away if you just take it to a machine and you're just doing most of the shape out on a jigsaw straight away or a bandsaw the point of carving and the point of whittling is to enjoy the process of it and not to rush through it it's a really quiet practice that you can just gain some really calm hours whittling away so it would be a shame if you just wanted to rush through one like i said it's fine if you're trying to produce a bunch of these but i think if you're just doing what i'm doing here and you're just sitting down and enjoying the experience i've got a cup of coffee over there and i got some biscuits and i'm just enjoying filming the process then it's a shame to sort of rush to a machine to cut these out so as i'm getting further into the depth of the shape that i want what I'm doing is I'm getting much more lighter with my, I don't know how well you can see that, I'm getting much more lighter with the carving. I'm not trying to take out chunks here. All I'm trying to do is where it's feathered, a tiny little bit because we're carving such a steep angle. So that's almost a V shape there. So it's feathered at the bottom because as we're carving down here this way, we're lifting up the grain because we're starting to go uphill instead of downhill and likewise with the other direction as well. So you get this kind of tear away at the bottom. And in order to get that, 
removed in order to carve that away you just have to do it really gently so that you get to a point where you're not lifting up the grain on the other side and it's really light strokes and this is where a really sharp knife comes in handy so just take your time with this part just to smooth out that area as much as you can and there's the finished depth carved and you can see all that feathering is gone as well so it is just a case of you know taking away a tiny tiny amount really softening that carving action often using the tip of the knife as well and then as you're getting down towards the bottom just a gentle twist of the knife in order to take off a really really thin shaving of wood so the next part that we need to carve now is rounding the base of this bowl so we're going to be taking off all of this and we're going to be rounding all of those soft edges as well along that circle but we're going to start by taking off a chunk of the wood here so for this part we can hold the scoop in our palm like this and we're just using our thumb to push away using the cut away from ourselves and we need to take off quite a bit of material here as well so resist the urge to try and take off a lot of wood at once and you really don't want to do that just take off tiny pieces at a time and eventually you'll take away the amount that you need Now that we've carved much of our bowl shape at the tip here, we need to start carving the back of the bowl so that it all blends together towards the handle. We can't continue to use the method where we're carving upwards because we're carving uphill, so we're carving against the grain. So just to give you an example, if I carve that way, you can see straight away there that the wood is tearing instead of carving effectively. So we need to reverse the grip. So you have two options here. You can either reverse the grip and continue carving this way, so away from yourself, you just need to be mindful of the tip of that knife against your hand here and against your finger. So you need to be very, very cautious as you're doing that. Or if you're a more confident carver, you can reverse the grip like this and you can carve this way. But again, you need to be mindful about where that knife edge is in, a, in comparison to where your thumb is. So you need to be very, very careful. So use whichever grip is more comfortable for you. I just wanna make a quick note here about knots in the wood. So I have a small knot here. Knots in the wood that you're carving can make it a little bit tricky because the flow of the grain direction is moving around that knot so it can suddenly change angle. You could be carving in the right direction and all of a sudden you'll meet a knot and the wood will start to tear even though you're carving in the right direction. It's because that grain has shifted and it's changed around that knot. The only way to combat this really is to take very, very small increments around that knot. So we've almost finished carving the rough shape of the bowl of the spoon here. But now we need to start carving the rim of the scoop in order for this to be all even as well. Now the problem we're going to come across here is the grain direction is flowing vertically. If we carve the rim of the scoop in the wrong direction, what's going to happen is we're going to have a large chunk of that wood split off. And if that happens, it's going to be really difficult to rectify. We'd basically ruin the spoon if we do that. So we need to ensure we're carving with the flow of the grain in the correct direction. The easiest way to do that, in your mind's eye, dissect that circle into four equal segments. So draw a cross through the middle of it in your mind. Each of those four segments is going to be carved in a different direction. So this segment here is going to be carved downwards. This next segment here, that's going to be carved upwards. We flip it over like this, this section here is going to be carved down and this, this section here is going to be carved upwards. So that direction is always ensuring that we're flowing correctly with the grain, that we're carving in the correct direction. And if we do that, then we're not going to have a large chunk of wood split off. The only areas that we need to be mindful of are those small points where each of those sections intersect. We may have a little bit of difficulty there, but it's just a case of being really cautious at those points. There we go, there's the rim of our bowl, so that's nice and even. We haven't risked splitting any of that wood off, so it's nice and even. And the actual bowl of the scoop is pretty much done now, so we need to move on to the handle. And I think I'm going to carve a little bit more off here. I think this is a little bit too steep for my liking, so I'm just going to carve a little bit off there so that the handle's nice and thin as well. So it's just a case of chipping away at the end again. I have enough of that material off. As before when we were carving that initial dip, we 
because we're starting to go back uphill here. So use that twist in motion and then we'll need to reverse it and just take our tiny, tiny amounts, just as we did initially when we were first carving that dip. So just be careful. You're not going too far into the wood when you reach the point where you're lifting up. So now I'm on to carving the top of the handle for the scoop. So I'm pretty happy with this rough shape of the bottom. I need to go and neaten up a few areas, but I want to start carving the top and I want it to sort of dip down just a little bit, just a little bit. So exactly the same way that we carved the base, I'm just carving away this wood, going away from myself and just dipping it down. And there's the finished smaller scoop. So you can shape yours in any kind of way that you want. You can do it thinner, you can sand it down completely so that it's entirely smooth. I always like to retain a little bit of whittled look on mine because I just think it's such a shame that you spend hours carving and you can't sort of see any of that when you sand it all smoothly. But this is your scoop, you can do whatever you want to it. Yeah, I always like to have a little bit of whittled look retained in any of my work, just so that you can see that it's been hand carved. So we're going to repeat the process for the larger scoop and it's going to be exactly the same. We're not going to do anything different, it's just on a larger scale. And here are the finished scoops. I absolutely love carving scoops as a little project. They're just such a fun way of whittling away some calm, patient hours. And they make fantastic gifts for people as well. As I said, there's no wrong way of the design for these. So if you want to completely smooth and sand these out, then that's absolutely fine. If you want to go thinner, change the shape, you can. These are your scoops, you do them however you want. In terms of finishing these, I'm going to leave them natural. I really like the look of that pale birch wood. So I'm not going to oil these. I may go over them with a beeswax balm at some point just to protect them a little bit but I love the pale white look birch wood, so I'm going to leave them natural. I really hope you enjoyed that video and you found it useful. Thank you so much again for joining me here at The Joy of Carving. Please support the channel by liking and subscribing, and as always, happy carvings.